Now you've heard the latest iPhone 14 Pro models have an amazing camera, a huge upgrade in terms of megapixels from the last few generations. You've heard some rumors that there's this fancy dynamic island thing on the iPhone 14 Pro. I mean, is that a new Netflix series? Or is that something that you as a consumer will actually use on your mobile phone? Let's try and find the answer for you. Hello and welcome, I'm Tovia and we talk all things product marketing and tech on this channel. By now you would have read all over the place that the iPhone 14 base models probably aren't a real big massive upgrade. I'll leave my thoughts in the show notes below, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think Apple's product strategy is for their base models. Is it a good idea to introduce the iPhone 14 Plus? What's your thoughts on it? Today we're going to discuss the benefits for you for potentially going out and purchasing the iPhone 14 Pro, what it means for you, what kind of features you can expect, and why Apple would go all the way out and introduce something new and imaginative as the iPhone 14 Pro with all its bells and whistles. So let's get into it. There are a whole heap of new things that Apple has introduced in the new iPhone 14 lineup. It's a very similar model and shape to last year's iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max models, but there are some very slight and some more major changes. Number one, the bezels are ever so slightly smaller, offering more space edge to edge. Number two, it's a much brighter screen to the point where it's like turning the light on at 2 a.m. There's some great new camera upgrades. As I mentioned, there's a 48 megapixel camera that's up from the 12 megapixel on the last year's iteration and the year before, and the year before, and the year before. Overall, in most of the reviews, there haven't been many differences that we can tell from last year's iPhone 13 Pro to this year's iPhone 14 Pro in terms of picture quality. But along with Apple's new photogenic engine, the new computational photography, and the ability to optically crop into 12 megapixels as opposed to that computational photography, this year's cameras are certainly going to be one of the best in any cell phone model. There is also one new camera mode found on the iPhone 14 Pro and it is also found on the iPhone 14, this action mode. It is ostensibly turning your phone into a gimbal whilst you do all those action shots running around. It'll make sure that the stability of your camera and the vision that you see is top notch. There's a new chip, the new A16 Bionic, unlike the iPhone 14 base models that have last year's iPhone 15 with a GPU upgrade. This iPhone 14 Pro has the A16 Bionic. To date, there's definitely high bench scores versus the iPhone 13 model. But again, will you really know the difference in real world activity? But the main thing, the most aesthetically noticeable change is that dynamic island. The thing at the top of your front screen of your iPhone, where the notch used to be, is now changed into an oblong, a pull shape, a pill and a dot shape. And in reality, it has many different uses. Right now, there are only first party and some third party applications taking full advantage of it. And essentially it acts as a new notification window. It can tell you things like where you're up to in terms of what you're listening to. It can show you some forms of notifications like real-time updates for apps like Uber, for example. And it can also act as a way for you to multitask. You can quickly click the top of the screen and look at an app and change between apps. So there really are some uses as it stands today. But for me, I believe that third parties will get on top of this and find new and funky ways to utilize it. And I actually believe it will be a big quality of life update for those who choose to opt for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max models. There are some other little updates that are also found in the iPhone 14 models. Things like crash detection, things like satellite connectivity, and eSIM only in the USA models. For those little updates, they are ostensibly also quality of life. But as Apple themselves have said, I hope that you never use them. So I'm not sure there's a massive benefit in those as opposed to the stuff we just discussed earlier. So to answer the massive question, is this phone for you? I think it really depends if you fit into one of the two categories. Number one, you are a creator and a heavy user of the pro model phones. That means you take heaps of photos, use the video quality images that come out of the iPhone 14 Pro camera modules, you take lots of videos, you do lots of editing with those videos, and you basically need the power that those cameras offer you. Or you take full advantage of the A16 Bionic, you're gonna be multitasking, you're a very heavy user, you want better battery life, and ostensibly these two people can be the pro heavy iPhone user. So that's category one. Category two is a little more, less altruistic. And you basically want the top level iPhone that you can possibly buy with the highest specs. You want the top of the top, best offering from Apple, and you go after the iPhone 14 Pro models. So if you're not in one of those two categories, 
and you have one of the latest iPhones, 13, 12, maybe even an 11, it's probably not gonna be a massive upgrade for you. And if you can get iOS 16 on your iPhone, those are where the major changes, especially aesthetically, are gonna be. So if you can upgrade to iOS 16, you might wanna give the iPhone 14 Pro a miss. But there is still one glaring question we have to ask. What is Apple's product strategy with introducing the iPhone 14 Pro? In particular, the introduction of the Dynamic Island and all the other main features we discussed. All in all, it comes down to pricing strategies. Take a look at Apple's big offering on their websites. They've still got the iPhone 13 there, they've got some iPhone 12s there, they've got an iPhone SE, they've got an iPhone 14, 14 Pro, 14 Plus, 14 Pro Max. So a massive gamut. And often when we have our own products and our own offerings, we tend to not really understand where they live on the customer's pricing and budget scale. But Apple have done the best job of understanding where all their consumer segments live and ensure that a model is there in each of those target audiences. In fact, that has been the Tim Cook model since he has taken over. The best way to describe this is by looking at the iPhone 14 base model. So I'll link my thoughts below in the show notes. But essentially, Apple has introduced an iPhone 13 from last year with a brand new coat of paint, some new colors, and slight tweaks here and there. But overall, it's really just an iPhone 13. With the iPhone 14 Pro, however, there are some major upgrades. So when you look at our own products and services that we offer our customers, we have to find ways to ensure that they keep coming back but also that we can continue to build revenue and increase our profits from the same set of customers. So the best way that Apple has decided to do this is to do something called anchor pricing. They've got the base model iPhones, they've got the iPhone Pro models, and if you look at the differences between the two, there's just a couple of hundred as you go up, particularly with the American price, and you can really see that every hundred dollars offers you a new upgrade. And so if you're looking at a plus model, for example, that's at $899, you have in your head, do I just spend an extra $100 and go with a Pro, or an extra $200 and go with a Pro Max? It starts you thinking about what is best for you. And Apple has deliberately done that so that you will think about what's best for you. Another way of looking at it is, Apple knows that most of the iPhones sold will be with the base models, whether it's just the 6.1 or that plus 6.7 inch model. And therefore it's chosen deliberately not to iterate so much in those models versus the pro models where they have to continue to iterate to continue to engage those pro level segments who want the best of the best, who want to feel like they're getting the best offering. So they choose to innovate at the higher end. But given that they know they're going to sell most of the models at the lower end, in effect, that lower end is subsidizing what they can do in the higher end. Or in other words, do very little in the lower end so that you can do a whole heap in the upper end knowing that this base will offset what you do over here. So what's an example in the real world? Well, if you're a cafe owner and you sell chocolate chip cookies at a dollar a piece, cookies, and you're also wanting to get into those premium sandwiches, potentially selling a pack of 10 cookies for $8 or $8.50 can help offset the profits or the loss of profits in those premium sandwiches. You don't wanna sell a sandwich for 30 bucks, but maybe selling a sandwich for 15 or 20, calling it a premium sandwich, and offsetting some of the loss of profits there with your chocolate chip cookies will be a great way for you to have an overall profit benefit with all your offerings. There are always some smart ways you can tweak your pricing models and your product strategies to ensure that you get the best profit overall. But it's not always about looking just at your one product category. Looking at all the products or services that you offer to ensure that you're reaching your profit goals or your product strategy goals will ensure that overall your business will be running smoothly. If you've liked this content, be that good girl or guy and give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the iPhone 14 Pro, what you like, what you dislike. Will you be going out and buying one? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, be sure to do that little extra good deed to bring a little light in the world. Until next time.